When would you use repeated subtraction as division strategy to solve a problem? In this lesson, we will help guide students to solve a task using a repeated subtraction division model. In order to be successful in this lesson, students will need to have a sound understanding of what division is and of the two division strategies of fair sharing and repeated subtraction. Josh is selling cookie dough to raise money for his school. He is selling three different kinds for different prices. The chocolate chip is $5 per tub. Oatmeal raisin is $4 per tub. Peanut butter is $3 per tub. Pedro spent $20 purchasing oatmeal raisin cookie dough. How many tubs did he purchase? You might recognize the division problem is 20 divided by 4. However, students in third grade are just developing an understanding of what division is. This is fairly complex and they will need to carefully look at the information one piece at a time. Students should first recognize that they know the amount spent, which is $20, and they know the cost of the oatmeal raisin cookie dough, which is $4. When you know the whole amount and the group size, but not the number of groups, repeated subtraction is an effective division strategy. A few students might be able to deal with the problem abstractly, but when they are just becoming familiar with this division strategy, it's best to have them show you with either pictures or objects. When they use pictures or objects to act out the problem and talk about it, they are able to see what is happening and make the connection to the abstract numbers and operations. Now let me show you one possible way to model the solution to this problem. I'm going to use pictures. First, I'm going to use a picture using dots to represent the $20. Each dot will represent $1, so I'm going to draw 20 dots. I know that each tub cost $4, so I will draw a box around four of the dots to represent one tub. So this is the first tub, and it cost $4. I started with $20, so I'm going to subtract $4 from the 20. So 20 subtract 4 is 16. And you can see off to the side of the tub, I still have those 16 dots left. Now I'm going to draw another square around four more dots, representing another tub of the cookie dough. And I'm going, also going to subtract $4 again from my amount that's left. So 16 subtract 4 is 12. I still have some money left over so I can continue adding tubs. So this is my third tub and I'm going to subtract $4 again. 12 subtract 4 is 8. And then once again I'm going to draw a box around and four more dots. And I'll subtract 4 again from my total amount and that leaves me with 4. I'll notice the last 4 are left on my model. I'll put my final box around those 4. And 4 minus 4 is 0, and as I look at my model, I can also see that I don't have any dots that are left over. So my repeated subtraction matches the model that I have on the side. I can also look on my model and count that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I know that Pedro bought 5 tubs of cookie dough. That corresponds with the repeated subtraction on the side. I can see that I subtracted 4, 1, two, three, four, five times. So this also shows me that Pedro bought five tubs of cookie dough. You want your students to be able to make the connection between both the repeated subtraction with numbers as well as with the models. Your child's representation may be different from mine. Just remember, there's not one right way to represent the problem. The most important thing is to have your child explain their thinking along the way. If you notice a mistake, avoid saying, that's wrong. Ask them more questions. Ask them, could you explain that part again? Does that make sense? When students go over their own work, they often catch their own mistakes, which is powerful, and that is what we want them to be able to do. As you model great questioning with your child, it will help them learn to question themselves as they work through problems and become confident, independent problem solvers.